These words spake Jesus and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour is come. Glorify thy Son, that thy Son also may glorify thee. As thou hast given him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. And this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. Eternal life, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. The glory, you'll notice, is to the Son. Glorify thy Son. Now, in our three Gospels, Mark, Matthew, Luke, we have a story about a man named Jesus, a historical story. Sometimes a God-man. What he said, what he did. John gives us a different story. Not of Jesus the man, God, but of Christ, the Spirit. Living through and as that which we call Christ Jesus. And so John takes us into the metaphysical aspect of life. And finally, in his revelation, into the higher mysticism which the world had missed. Today we see a world in which man has not found a living God. The religions of the world have not been able to produce one. We see that in the East, Man is living out his karma under bondage to the belief that he must do that. We see that in the West, man is hanging on to the coattails of Jesus, even hoping someday he will return. And we find that John, having known the Spirit, having lived with he who came through unreality into reality and being probably the, most, the foremost disciple of the Master, now brings us the seven messages to the churches with promises far beyond anything that has been presented to us by any form of orthodoxy known to man. I'd like you to hear again those promises in the letters to the seven churches. Each of them a revelation not of a hereafter, not of a tomorrow, not of something to be attained after you die. Each of them a promise, but really a statement of an established fact. Listen now. These were the seven promises in the seven letters. To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the tree of life. And ask yourself if that tree of life is somewhere in heaven, around the corner, in the sky, or in the future. Is it a living tree? Is it present? Are you being told that there is a consciousness that lives in and of the substance of God? 
which is in the midst of the paradise of God. And he that overcometh shall not be hurt of the second death. And you recall the words, glorify thy son. Eternal life. And now, not hurt of the second death. Has orthodoxy told us not to be hurt of the second death? Or has it told us to crawl on our stomachs and pray for a little crumb so that we can be admitted somewhere, sometime, into a heavenly portal? What is this second death? To him that overcometh will I give to eat of this hidden manna, hidden but present, as the kingdom of God within us. And we'll give him a new white stone, and in the stone a new name written, which no man knoweth saving he that receiveth it. The body of the soul, the white stone. Is it tomorrow? Or is it a living fact now? Is the name Christ tomorrow or is it a fact now? Whoever receives it knows it now. And he that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end of what? Unto the end of the false selfhood. Unto the end of the belief in humanhood unto the end of the belief in mortality, unto the death of all that is unreal and unlike the Father, unto the death of material consciousness, unto the death of the lie about God, he that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end, to him will I give power over nations, over matter and he shall rule them with a rod of iron as the vessels of a potter shall they be broken to shivers even as I received of my father who is this I? Jesus or Christ as Christ receiveth of the father for I, Christ, go unto the Father. Who is this I, this Christ, if not the I of your being? As the I of your being receiveth of the Father. Where else can you receive of the Father except in the I of your being? And I, the Christ of your being is that I, will give him the morning star. Where will the light of illumination come from except from the light of your own being? I, the light of your being, am the morning star. He that overcometh, the same shall be clothed in white raiment, the soul body. And I will not blot out his name out of the book of life. But I will confess his name before my father and before his angels. And so in I realized in conscious union with the spirit of God in yourself. Aware of your identity. You step out of that which is imitation. That which is concept. That which is counterfeit that which is transient, that which is temporal, that which is not. And without going anywhere, you stand revealed as the Son of God, standing, living, being. In that which is real, perfect, eternal. Now, where you are. To him that overcometh. 
will I make a pillar in the temple of my God and he shall go no more out your reincarnating days are over when identity is realized for that is the purpose of all that has come to this point what are we overcoming then we are overcoming me that I may shine forth we are overcoming the limited span of life we are overcoming the finite mind we are overcoming the finite sense of body we are dying to that which never was that way we may live in the spirit without a remnant of material consciousness to pull us back out of Eden without the human animosities without the human thought without the human images without bondage to the flesh without fear without doubt with total assurance that where I stand is the kingdom of God here and now is there another are there two worlds or do we overcome the illusion that there is this world and my father's kingdom and so we find these are promises but they are more than promises they are invisible facts they exist there is a consciousness that lives in the kingdom of God here and now to him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne even as I also overcame and am set down with my father in his throne and these are the promises now these seven promises are only the prologue of the revelation of St. John they certainly are a weather vane to tell us that the human race has been moving in the wrong directions divinity is the least known commodity to mankind perfection absence of fear joy in the living presence of God within us awareness of that divinity in our neighbor the removal of all the veils the differences the prejudices the beliefs these are not for tomorrow these already have been removed they do not exist in your true identity and John in his first vision in his first resurrection was lifted into mastership out of self that he might reveal to you and to me to the world the nature of the invisible which we cannot discern with our human minds he starts with a key word in his first vision in the fourth chapter after this I looked and behold a door was opened in heaven just a moment before that he had said and heard the voice say behold I stand at the door and knock and now behold a door was open and we have to say to ourselves why did it open for him if I stand at the door and knock if reality if Christ is knocking at my consciousness now why doesn't my consciousness open as John's did
and the word is after after that I looked after what after he had surrendered his personal selfhood after he was completely purified of self will after he no longer sought through the power of his mind or the power of his fist or the power of any material form or commodity to live but rather to live completely and solely through the activity of the spirit not by might nor by power not a statement but a way of life a way of life in which he totally ceased to be John but could join those who had before him said I live yet not I Christ and only Christ liveth my life after that I looked and behold the door opened after he had submitted to the discipline of becoming a pure and empty vessel living completely by divine revelation Then he looked and he was in the invisible. He was lifted out of this dimension and he beheld what human eyes have never seen. For now he was looking through his soul. Are we to do the same? Can we? Is that not the meaning of pick up thy cross? Deny thyself. Follow me. Are we still living in a mental universe? A physical universe? Now we can stand behind John and watch what happens in the soul universe. When we walk out of the dimensions of time and space and form and motion and human activity when the flesh is no more when we're not in the consciousness of a physical form behold the door is open we stand in new dimensions we're looking through the eyes of the soul The first voice which I heard was, as it were, of a trumpet talking with me which said, Come up hither, and I will show thee things which must be hereafter. Hereafter to men who live in time, but now to those who live in spirit. He was seeing it now, not hereafter. And what he saw in the now is in the now, now. Whatever John saw in the now, in this new dimension of consciousness, is present this moment. It is not in the hereafter, except to those who live in the third dimension of consciousness. And so we are privileged to stand behind the veil in the now, seeing what men will see in the hereafter of time immediately I was in the spirit and behold a throne was set in heaven and one sat on the throne
In the Lord's Prayer we have said, Father, thy will be done. And if that's all we did, you will now see how shallow a phrase that is until it comes from the very depth of your being. For here we're going to see that the will of the Father is being done. It doesn't require a human instrument at all. There's no power on this earth that can persuade the will of the Father to go into action or to stop action. The human mind, hoping to influence God, has tried so hard. Father, let thy will reach me and make it good. <coughs> Make it make me better, relieved, comfortable, secure. But that will has already done all of that. Everything your human mind could possibly think of seeking has already been done by the will of the Father. And John is showing us that you don't have to petition the will of God. You have to recognize that it is functioning. You have to accept that the will is functioning. You have to know that because it is functioning, regardless of what you see, the perfect will of the perfect Father is functioning right where you stand and it makes no difference what appearances come your way. Nothing that you could possibly do on this earth can prevent the perfect functioning of the will of God which is a permanent dispensation. Every error you think you have committed has not in one whit affected the perfect will of the Father which was present maintaining a perfect government right where you believe you committed an error. You didn't. It is not possible. The will of the Father would not commit an error in his kingdom and there is no other place yes you have an error in the illusion and you're not forced to live there and so John is lifting the veil to show us the nature of the will of God and to him it comes as a throne the consciousness that is God contains within itself a throne which is the will of God this is how he sees it through the soul and what is seated on that throne within the consciousness of God is the throne the will and seated on that throne is who Jesus Christ yes but is that all seated on the throne of the will of God is the complete spiritual household of those who walk in Christ we are all destined to be seated on that throne the power of God the power of that will exemplified by Christ the collective Christ is seated on that throne and why is Christ seated on the throne of the will of God because Christ is the king Christ in you is now seated on the throne of the will of God and if you wish to reach the will of the Father if you wish to live under the power of that will you cannot do it of your own human self you must go to the kingdom of God within you the Christ who is seated on the throne of the Father to many of us these are words to John it was an experience out of the flesh in which Christ to him became tangible 
not as a limited personal Christ but as an infinite Christ a Christ who is king of the kingdom of God a Christ who makes us all joint heirs in this kingdom as we find the way within to the self to the identity of being out of the turmoil of human thought and so now to John this is real there is the infinite consciousness of the Father the infinite will within the consciousness the infinite Christ within the will all one and all power is in the Christ for the will of God functions, activates the Christ and the Christ is the divine image and likeness of the Father. Slowly, the word lifts us out of human thought, out of human planning, out of human differences, and we find an invisible power drawing us into oneness with the Christ of our own being. We become single pointed. We are not diffused minds seeking in many directions for many things. We learn to abide in the sure positive awareness that Christ in me is one with the will of the Father that will which is ever functioning ever maintaining a perfect divine government is active as the Christ of my being now it is becoming real a living Christ the living action of a living God it is present it is ever now it is ever completely independent of the images that walk the earth I become aware of that omnipresent Christ that omnipresent will that omnipresent spirit that omnipresent light that omnipresent power and I learn to abide in it with confidence I learn that grace is omnipresent peace is omnipresent joy is omnipresent love is omnipresent the fullness of the father's selfhood has always been where I am through the eyes of Christ that becomes an experience and then a continuing experience until it is a permanent dispensation where are your problems when Christ is your consciousness where are these dual veils of fear and doubt what possible evil can be present in omnipresence did your eyes see something that was wrong something that you wished hadn't been what of it are we living in appearances or are we glued to Christ within
Are we not free of mortal thought when we have released ourselves to Christ? Can we not rest in the knowledge that his government was not pushed aside by some physical act in our so-called world? Can we not retire and remain in the center of our being until there is no center anymore, it is all that we are? John is doing that for us as we move in the higher consciousness. And he that sat was to look upon like a jasper and a sardine stone. And there was a rainbow round about the throne in sight like unto an emerald. These precious stones the brilliance of the sardine stone and the jasper the emerald hue that encircled the throne all of this and the rainbow were the symbols seen of the omnipresent spirit in its full omnipotence and full omniscience. These sublime qualities appeared now to John and there was the rainbow. the return to conscious union with God oneness sonship the sign of the covenant between God and man when you see this bow in the heavens when you see this bow in your consciousness you are the pure at heart for there is no darkness in the Father and when there is darkness there is no rainbow when there is no black in the white light you see the rainbow when there is no darkness in your consciousness the full spectrum of omnipresence omnipotence and omniscience are functioning in your being and appear as a visible rainbow within you the sign of illumination the light without darkness for in him is no darkness at all and now John is in conscious union with God all is light all is purity all is the awareness that there is no evil there is no darkness it is impossible for God is all spirit fills all space all time where then is evil no longer in the consciousness of John for he has risen above that dimension of thought which knows and believes and reacts to the appearance of evil and so the rainbow the consciousness which is no longer divided into good and evil into light and dark into God and something else but the consciousness that God is all that spirit is all that can be why only John what about us do we believe there is aught but spirit 
aught but God? Do we still believe there is such a thing as evil? Error? Problems? We know better. We simply haven't remained alert. We haven't let them dissolve by touching the light of our consciousness. We have even let them tempt us into reaction and given them a life they do not have. This inner rainbow, this light, this glory, this realization takes you out of body consciousness. You still appear in the world, you're visible to others, but your consciousness lives in reality. There are no opposites in your consciousness now. Whatever you discern is that which is in the kingdom of God under divine law and ever perfect. You have shattered the belief in a human lifespan that begins with birth and ends with death. You are your pre-existent self reunited with the Father living as the one eternal life that is the permanent truth of your being you are not divided against yourself all this is symbolized by the rainbow the inner vision of heaven and out of the throne proceeded lightnings thunderings and voices and there were seven lamps of fire burning before the throne which are the seven spirits of God it was Zachariah who said neither by might nor by power but by my spirit says the Lord my spirit my commandments and these are the lightnings the thunderings and the voices that proceed from the throne of God to those who are attuned to the shepherd within to receive direct guidance direct inspiration the bread of life itself the hidden manna from the source instead of from human ministers instead of from those who profess to dispense the word of God you are being told that the word must come from the source that the fountain of your being provides the living waters of truth and nowhere else can truth be attained The lightnings, the thunders, the voices must come from your own inner spirit. The will of God in you. Thy will be done. Thy lightnings, thy thunders, thy voice. Not the voice of man. To that we respond. And so John feels now the experience of oneness of inseparability from the infinite source he is drinking deeply from the fountain of life itself he is living by the word that proceedeth from the throne of God not by his human instincts 
not by his personal sense of life, not by his own ambitions or desires. These have been abandoned. He has been born into unself, that self which has no personal motives, which lives completely by serving the spirit. And this is the way we are learning to walk. Do you sense perhaps that the wayward impulses in us the fears and the doubts, the hopes, the ambitions, the plans are all no longer necessary but are merely distractions from that single pointed purpose of serving the will of God in you. Can you see that in serving that will every possible hope you could probably have would have been taken care of in advance by the Father who knoweth your needs. Do you see how we are being led into the effortless life? The life that is not struggling to attain but rests in its own identity as the attainment already established before the foundations of the world. We are seeing the inner operation of the divine government the consciousness the will the power invested in Christ Christ the kingdom of God in you the chain of command has been set up for you to consciously accept by dwelling in the awareness of Christ in you For Christ in you is already all-knowing, all-powerful, all-presence. What is excluded there? What has been withheld from your being if Christ in you is all there is? All wisdom, all life, all power, eternal being. Has anything been withheld from your being? So we are being turned from the false sense of self which walks apart from Christ seeking survival struggling planning thinking hoping maneuvering all in the counterfeit mind. Christ should be coming very real to us. As the living Son of God, standing where we have thought of ourselves as human flesh. That rainbow should be bursting forth any moment now enabling you to say oh whereas before I was blind now I see in my own true selfhood I am omnipresent I am omniscient I am omnipotent The power I was trying to secure is a symbol compared to what I already am. The supply I thought I lacked, I didn't lack at all. I couldn't see the invisible manna, the incredible abundance beyond all human imagination waiting to shower forth through Christ realized. I was trying to climb into the door of heaven the wrong way. 
I thought I had to do it. But all the time I, Christ, have been knocking at the door of your consciousness. Isn't there a manger in there somewhere where you can admit me? Even in a little stable. Let me come in. I will feed you. The child will lead you. The babe will grow up and will blaze your trail into the kingdom of God. And so we learn to admit the Christ into consciousness. We too open the door. We too behold the throne. We too feel the power of the will of the Father. We too see the rainbow. And we learn that the light we see, we are. We are that light. For Christ is that light. The eye of your being is the light of the Father. Nothing to seek nothing to attain simply to be that infinite self which you are and rest and behold his glory where you stand to those of us who will make the effort To stand at the door of thought and watch the human world's thought enter and learn the art of stilling that thought, unresponding to that thought, completely non-resistant to that thought, we will take our dominion over that thought. And as the thought of the world makes no penetration, does not tempt you to react, to maneuver, to improve, to correct, but to see through the veil of human thought, to stand ye still, to know his will is here, it is being done. His will is perfection. Perfection is being done. There is no power on earth to stop perfection from being done here and now. Then you will grasp the glorious truth that you have been going through an initiation. With many trials, many temptations, many diverging, distracting influences, all of which you had thought, oh, what did I do to bring this upon myself? You didn't. They are not happening. They only seem to be. Every problem you are facing now is part of your initiation. Perfection is. That is the fact. The problem is the denial that perfection is. But that doesn't change the fact. Where do you stand? That determines your experience. If you think life can be less than life, if you think God can be less than God, then your problems to you are something you have to fight and struggle against. But if you are living in the consciousness of Christ in you, accepted, 
Can Christ and the problem exist in the same place and the same time? What is John doing for us? He is lifting the veil of hypnotism. He is revealing the mesmerism through which the five senses present to us a physical problem, an emotional problem, a human problem, a mental problem, a social problem, a financial problem. Where there is no problem, where there is only Christ. And the initiation then is, can you overcome the belief that Christ is absent and instead come to the knowledge that the problem is absent? For Christ is living, present as your being. Every acceptance of a problem is the denial of your own identity. Do you see that? When you accept a problem, you are denying yourself to be the Son of God. But you say, I wouldn't, I can't be the Son of God because look, would this problem happen to the Son of God? The answer is no, it would not. And therefore, it did not. Because the fact that you are the Son of God does not change. Identity does not change. And you're right, this problem wouldn't happen to the Son of God. And you are the Son of God. Then where is the problem? It is in the world mind, is it not? It is being presented to you by the world mind and what is your individual human mind doing about it? You're agreeing, yes, world mind, there is a problem. I'm not Christ, I'm not the Son of God, I'm just a poor old mortal. Dig me a coffin, let me die. But not John, not those who have come this far, not those who are willing to stand and be the children of the resurrection. We stand, we behold the salvation of the Lord. Who is this Lord whose salvation we behold? Christ within, present, doing a great job, running a perfect government right here, in spite of what you experience in the images of the human mind. Now as you firm up your awareness of self, you'll discover the power of non-resistance to the hypnotism of images of this world does the work for you. You can put that sword on back in the scabbard. You can take that mind which wants to reason out logically just why this isn't so. You can put it back on the shelf. You can stand on nothing except identity without defense not only can you but it is the way you will learn because it is the Father's will that you learn that way you must learn that the Christ needs no defense neither mental nor physical because the Christ walks in the kingdom of God in spite of every appearance that denies it. The great temptations of Jesus were temptations that face us all in greater or lesser degrees. And in an infinite assortment of temptations. And each must be faced the same way. This cannot happen because God is all. And so the mesmerism of the human mind falls on a consciousness that is unmoved by 
the visible, tangible evidence of the five sense mind. John had shed all belief in the possibility of evil and error. That's why John is where he is in this consciousness of reality. You must weed these concepts out of your mind. And all of the weeding is a daily unceasing activity. We mustn't let these small trials upset us. And when we do that, we'll find the bigger trials will not penetrate the armor of light that we wear. Don't make the mistake of thinking we're turning from problems because we're weak, because we want to pretend they're not there, no, but rather because we know that in the presence of God, who is everywhere, the problem is nothing but the false activity of a carnal mind. It didn't happen because it couldn't happen. God didn't leave that scene, ever. And even though your human mind says, I don't understand it, you will reach the consciousness which transcends the human mind which does not understand it. And then you will see the material world as a sequence of images and thought. Bombs and airplanes and automobiles and streets and people, all physical things you will rise above the belief in the physical world. You will be able to move without violating divine law. And all because the will of the Father functioning through the Christ of you received accepted, faithfully lived in, does the work for you. Grace does the work for you. Grace moves you. Grace thinks you. Grace activates you. Grace opens the door for you only when you have willingly learned devotedly to divest yourself of the personal the will of the human being you have denied thyself taken up thy cross and you are following Christ within now if you still want the problems you can have them but if you do not want them Christ within is the way. Now we're going to see how this Christ within works a little bit. And round about the throne were four and twenty seats. Upon the seats I saw four and twenty elders sitting, clothed in white raiment. And they had on their head, heads crowns of gold. We have 24 seats, 24 elders, crowns of gold on their heads. And they're all around the throne, the will of God. Now these 24 elders on the 24 seats are the fourth, the fifth, and the sixth heavens. all around the seventh. These are the various levels of consciousness ahead of us as we step out of the third degree, the third dimension, into the fourth. 
fifth and sixth and these are all degrees in the will of God so that they are being shown to John as very tangible he is seeing circles of eight eight elders fourth heaven eight elders the fifth heaven eight elders in the sixth heaven and those are the 24 seats the 24 elders the circles of eight in the three redeemed heavens above this redeemed in the sense that the souls are now no longer hampered by physical forms by human concepts by human will and these elders represent those who have gone before us having attained that unselfing which you and I are going through now an elder is not an individual but rather a group a complete host of angels makes one elder and so every elder is really a complete spiritual household with thousands and thousands and thousands of angels in one elder and they are arranged in fourth, fifth and sixth heavens so that each comes closer to the throne and this is the progression you and I are going through the moment we enter the fourth dimension we will be that much closer to the total will of the Father and within each heaven is a certain degree of wisdom a certain boundary a certain level and this is called the elder we become elders as we enter the fourth dimension before the throne there was a sea of glass like unto crystal and in the midst of the throne and round about the throne were four beasts full of eyes before and behind the sea of glass is the one divine consciousness it's like the still waters in the 23rd Psalm when we are in the sea of glass in the one infinite consciousness there is no second selfhood there is only the one and this will is in the sea of glass in the throne the throne is in the consciousness which is one the all embracing infinite consciousness of the father and these in the fourth fifth and sixth heavens have learned to become as one in that one all embracing consciousness they live in it they abide in it they have their being in God all personal will has been removed all sense of personal individuality all individuality is now spiritual infinite without boundaries without limitation not confined within the concepts of the human mind they have been released unto the fullness of the one divine consciousness the sea of glass do you notice that everything spoken of so far by John is about the eye of your being do you think these are elders 
walking out there somewhere or hosts of angels out there somewhere he is showing you the divine order in the eye of your being he is showing you that there is a sequence in the many mansions you cannot hasten it by human will you cannot change it by human effort the divine sequence of the infinite is already established all this is a revelation to him of the many mansions within each of us everything he is describing is taking place in the infinite eye that you are of which the human consciousness is unaware it is all a great education to the human consciousness to be still and let the father build the house such a vastness of reality stands behind the facade of this world that the moment the human consciousness is told about it and disciplined to be still and to become a beholder then the 24 elders are fed by the sea of glass each heaven is brought into sequence within your own being and the outer activity here in form becomes an infinite event made visible grace made flesh you can almost breathe in God resting in the awareness that all around you is life invisible but never divided from you always functioning always maintaining its perfect self and you can identify as that life and know that within it each heaven is functioning in perfect sequence with the one above it that every level of consciousness is feeding the one below it and when you receive an inner impartation the seventh, sixth, fifth and fourth heavens are moving through your consciousness in the will of the divine purpose and the Lord is building your house it will not fall it has substance it is being fed by the sea of glass the unobstructed virgin consciousness of God this is our 24 hour a day dispensation if we will accept it to John the living consciousness of God is now a reality he is looking at the redeemed heavens being fed by that consciousness he is showing you the anatomy of an impulse that comes to you from the higher levels He is showing you that the computers of man are but toys. That infinite automation is functioning all around you and there is no power to stop it. It can be accepted as the finished kingdom here now. This becomes your consciousness of the now and takes you out of the passing time now are we taught by God now are we in the consciousness of God now are we the consciousness of God expressing and nothing changes it regardless of what appears 
these four beasts, these four creatures, are the mighty river of life, breaking into four fountainheads that feed the universe. One looks like the face of a man, one like the face of a calf, one like the face of a lion, one like an eagle. They're listed as lion, calf, face of a man, and eagle. Again, we're looking at the omnipotence, the receptivity to that omnipotence, the omniscience, and the omnipresence. When you are receptive unto the qualities of God in you, you are the calf. And when you are recepted, you are also the lion, omnipotent. You are also the face of a man, omniscient. You are also the eagle soaring above all, ever present everywhere. These are the four redeemed heavens. Where each soul functions in the knowledge that the will of the Father is omnipotent, omnipresent, omniscient, and that soul is receptive like a calf unto that expression of the divine will. You know, you wouldn't have to go any further than this to live consciously in the kingdom of God. But you would have to know that the only enemy you have is just as invisible as this complete perfect kingdom which is all around us. And that enemy is without ceasing using your human mind as a way to tempt you into a false state of being, a false consciousness, a false identity, a false life. And unless you are consciously insisting within yourself that God is always omnipotent, always all-knowing, always present, unless to these qualities you are constantly receptive, that false mind of the world will ever be your tempter ever turn you away from your true self. These are the four beasts, the four creatures whom John sees as entrusted with the task of shining his light throughout the universe. You have an opportunity here to accept the enlightened vision of one who is going through that which you will go through in your first resurrection. And they had eyes before and behind. Only in the will of the Father do we find the substance of life. The eyes before and behind. The all-knowing substance functioning in the will of the Father. Four beasts had each of them six wings about him. And they were full of eyes within. And they rest not day and night saying, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, which was and is and is to come. The 
six wings are the six degrees again to which each heaven is broken up so that in each heaven we have these six degrees of activity coming closer and closer and closer to the throne the six wings are the six stages of activity which combined become the seventh the completed stage of that heaven and so again the divine sequence is being established you cannot move something out of its proper place the eye of you is being lifted perfectly according to divine plan from the six wings comes the seventh of completion which lifts you into the next heaven and the beginning of another six wings six stages of drawing closer to the fullness of the will and only when you are doing this do you have eyes within life substance isn't it a straight and narrow road that if we are not in this will moving in this divine progression unfolding this way we are not in the will of the father we have no life substance and that which we do is unrelated to life itself what a perfect description of our lives up to the time when truth crossed the horizon of our knowledge a perfect description of the civilization in which we live unaware of the living will of God in our midst and they rest not day and night saying holy 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 Lord God Almighty which was and is and is to come unchanging the same yesterday today and tomorrow is the spirit of your being five thousand years from now you'll be no greater than you are this instant for you are now the fullness of I holy 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 that is a condition which you might liken to the absolute in which your total being is spiritually immersed you are completely devoid of human will and here John sees those who are living in the absolute free of every vestige of their former disobedience in the flesh they are without sin they have lost the capacity to live in concept and therefore everything they do and say is called holy 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 they live only in the divine will for they have discovered that the Lord God Almighty was, is, and is to come there's only God God is the allness divinity is all there is there never was a human being created by the Father there is no human being on this earth there is only divinity hidden from the false consciousness called the human mind as all of this becomes more real to us we lose the feeling that I'd like to give up my humanhood but I have nothing else to cling to we become aware that there's nothing we need cling to as spiritual beings we don't need a place to be a crutch for us 
what we're giving up is the unreality we could never have in the first place. We're learning that the key to life is dying to that which has no existence. It is an acquisition. It's the dropping away of unreality which is the dying. When Jesus had let all human concepts drop away there stood Christ revealed. God who is, God who was, God who is and God who is to come. The same as in Ecclesiastes. All that ever was, all that ever will be, is now. Nothing is changing except human concepts. Infinite perfection is now. And living in that consciousness is saying holy, holy, holy. Living in the awareness of omnipresent infinite perfection under the perfect government of the Spirit. You too are saying holy, holy, holy. God who was, who is, and is to come. And when these beasts give glory and honor and thanks to him that sat on the throne, who liveth forever and ever, the four and twenty elders fall down before him that sat on the throne and worship him that liveth forever and ever and ever and cast their crowns before the throne. When they cast their crowns before the throne, when they fall down before the throne, you see, that is the acceptance in you, the elders in you, the higher levels of you. That is the acceptance of the will of God as the only will of your being. When you throw your crown before that will you are the master willing to serve the will of the Father in you saying Lord thou art worthy to receive glory and honor and power for thou hast created all things and for thy pleasure they are and were created you are see the one divine life you are being integrated out of the diverse individual beings who walk the earth in separate forms integrated into the realization of one infinite self. You're no longer a separate bee, you're now a beehive. You're no longer one person. You're the one self. And you're letting the will of that self live itself without conflict. And you can for a moment see this, that if there were not a conflict of wills in your life, you could never have a problem. It's the will of the infinite in you, which is perfection. It has the power to maintain that perfection. And if you are able to weed out the will that conflicts with the will of the infinite, you'll discover everything you do is in the infinite will. There'll be no conflict of wills. There'll be no violation of divine law, conscious or subconscious. You will be moving in the rhythm of the one will. I'd like very much to do the fifth chapter, but I'm afraid we'll be caught in the middle of it. And it's too important to split that way. So what we'll do is to review what John has given us here. He's preparing us for the book of life. Reality. Truth. He's going to take us up to that throne and show us that 
In the right hand of him who sits upon the throne is the book of life. And who is worthy to take it out of his hand? And he's talking to each of us. Can we walk up to the right hand of the Father and take the book of life out of his hand? What does that mean? We find that no human being on earth can do it. Not one. There's not one of us can do it. We can say we can. Not one of us can move into the perfect sea of glass. and find reality, life eternal, immortality realized and lived in now. Only one can, the Lamb. Now that's a strange title, the Lamb. In the midst of those on the throne, here stands the Lamb alone of all those on the earth who can reach into the right hand of God to open the pages of the book of life. Now what are we being told there? You remember in the temple when Jesus drove out the money changes and drove out those with their flocks of so-called unblemished animals, the sacrificial animals that were given Mankind, to an extent, has been making his sacrifices to God. All kinds of sacrifices. He thought perhaps that a 10% tithe was about as good a sacrifice as you could make. We discover, though, that God doesn't want any lambs or tithes or sacrifices. God is complete. There's nothing you can give to God. Absolutely nothing. But the Lamb who takes the book of life out of the hand of God <coughs> is the Christ. Which on earth is slain the Christ which is slain on the earth rejected by the human consciousness this very Christ which is slain and rejected by the human consciousness is the lamb that can reveal reality and that slain lamb is beheld again by John standing in the midst of the throne and that slain lamb is the Christ of your being rejected by you through your many reincarnations. That slain lamb must be accepted by you as you and becomes the resurrected lamb. Christ resurrected, Christ realized in you is the lamb that alone takes the book of life out of the hand of God. In other words, you never enter reality except through the Lamb. And the sacrifice, instead of being a dove, or a tithe, or a few good deeds, or some philanthropy, the sacrifice is your total human selfhood. The sacrifice of your human selfhood is the acceptance of your divine selfhood. That becomes the resurrected lamb standing, reaching forth, taking reality, truth, identity from the Father. Maybe you didn't intend to give yourself up. But there are no half measures. The surrender of self totally continues in the form of initiation until the initiate 
goes through every possible dark night of the soul willingly, hopefully, eagerly in order to attain the high price the high prize of Christ realized. There's nothing left of ourselves that we want. For we want the gold that has been tried in the fire. We become the lamb that we sacrifice. And it becomes a labor of love. It's the most narrow pathway there is. And that's your dedication to the truth of your being instead of to the lie. Now John is carefully laying the groundwork for your Christhood realized. For in our human sense of things we have been willing to pause along the way. We have been willing to dishonor the Father we have been willing to set our own goals and we have suffered for it. And now the way of the rainbow, the acceptance, the conscious awareness that this world mind, this imitation, this mass mesmerism that has made me walk the earth as flesh as blood is understood and you know what is meant now by divine blood for that throne which is the will of the father is divine blood and that divine blood that living will is in you with its power with its all-knowing, with its grace, with its love. And through it you are lifted into the land of perfect love, perfect peace, perfect vision, perfect hearing, perfect you. The you you always have been and never could be less. So John is breaking these veils Christ in John Christ in you we're going to walk into that place next week then where we are ready to open the book of life We had hoped this week to start breaking a seal or two. But apparently John has other ideas. We must be prepared by the release within ourselves from self-will. Now how are you going to go about that from now till next week? How can you recognize self-will? It has so many disguises. It even comes as an impartation, you think, from the Father. Surely you think this is the Father's will I'm doing. How can you tell the difference? By their fruits you shall know them. The angels of the Lord, these blessed inner impartations, carry their signs with them. Do you doubt this is a dispensation of the Father? You can be sure it isn't then. There's never a doubt when it comes from the Father. You know. It has the ring of authority. And signs follow. Are you worried about failure? Don't worry. You cannot fail. Success has already been attained in the Spirit.
Mine own shall hear my voice. Mine own shall come to me. We are now become one household in the Father. And it is our function, each of us, living in the integrity of our own soul, to be open and alive to the truth of all those around us. Don't make this a personal thing. Don't draw it down to the level of a me trying to be a spirit. Or a me trying to get God to come into my being. Don't limit yourself to the dimensions of the form. You are every bit as present where someone else appears to be as you are where your own form seems to stand. There's no place where you are not. There's no place where I am not and I is your name. Start lifting the veil everywhere. And as you widen your scope of receptivity The impartations will be deeper, more frequent, more important to you. More light will shower through you to bless those around you. We are the children of the resurrection. We are being led gently into that consciousness which walks this earth aware of the kingdom of light. Who can turn to a child that hurts or a nation or a religion or a political group and look at any one of them with the knowledge that these are forms concealing to human eyes the invisible perfect Christ and to that alone we are true the perfect invisible Christ in all We don't have a club that says blacks are excluded. We don't have any restrictions other than the integrity to the truth of God in all. Constantly. And by all means, integrity to the truth of God where you stand. And you too will see your rainbow. You will find the floodgates of heaven open in your consciousness. In our truth to truth, our fidelity to truth, truth functions in us. John is here, just another forerunner of your new consciousness as the new man who walks the earth. There are so many beautiful things ahead for us that are all true right now. And that will be our final meditation. Let us live in the finished kingdom of God on earth in consciousness. It will not be better tomorrow because now is perfect. Catch that in yourself, please. Now is perfect.
as you walk this very narrow, narrow path, you'll discover it opens into infinity on earth as it is in heaven. It was a great joy to be with you today. Much is happening, I'm quite sure, in all of us. It will be very interesting to behold the changes that take place in our outer lives because of this inner transformation we're all going through. Thanks for being here. Thank you.